Are you looking for some ideas for getting the most out of your embossing folders? If the answer is yes, then keep on watching as I have five ways with embossing folders and some great techniques to use in your next mixed media, card making, art journaling or art project. And if you want some more art tips, tutorials and inspiration, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. So technique number one is rubbing. It's an oldie but a goodie and you may feel like you're back in your kindergarten days but still it's such a simple and often forgotten way to use your embossing folder. I just love it. So have a play with different weights of paper and I have three different weights here. A lightweight printer paper, a medium weight art drawing paper and a heavyweight cardstock. And I've listed everything that I've used here today below the video in case you have any questions about it. Also try different colouring products as well. Now this technique works with a wide range of different colouring materials. So the green here is a Neo Colour 2 crayon, the blue is an ink tense block and the red is an oil pastel. But don't forget to try your other pastels and pencils, they all work as well. You can get some really lovely results by rubbing the side of the block or crayon rather than using the tip. Plus, don't forget as well to try both textured surfaces of the folder, as they both can give you some interesting looks. Okay, next up is using embossing folders to add texture to paint. And I'm just roughly covering a surface in my art journal with some heavy body acrylic paint. Now, how thick the paint is will affect the texture that you'll get. And to clean off your embossing folder, use warm water and an old soft toothbrush before the paint has a chance to dry on the folder. And as you can see, where the paint was thinner, you get the pattern of the folder. But where it was thicker, you kind of tend to get that texture that you get when you press something flat into acrylic paint and lift it off again. So have a play around with the thickness to get the look that works for you. Let's now use the embossing folder in a way that it was intended to be used and emboss some cardstock to set up for the next technique. Number three, which is a fun technique to use with water-soluble crayon or pastel like this ink tense block that I'm using here. If I rub the ink tense block on one of the embossed pieces of cardstock, we get some lovely colour picked up on that embossed area. That's great, but we can go further. Let's just spray it with water and watch the colour spread. So for the second piece of embossed cardstock, I'm spraying it with water first then look what happens when I rub the ink tense block over the surface. So another fun way to try it out. And again, try this with your different water soluble crayons, pastels and pencils too. For my next technique, I've got my brayer out again and back with the acrylic paint too. Now the trick to this one is getting the right amount of paint onto your brayer to get the look that you want. And I think paper works better with this technique than cardstock unless you have a very thin cardstock. But hey, you know, use whatever you've got to hand and see what kind of looks you get. You also tend to get better results with a thin layer of paint on your brayer. So if you have to, just brayer off some of the excess paint on a spare piece of paper. Okay, so for one of my favourite embossing folder techniques, I have left it to last. And it links back to that technique number one, as it also uses rubbing, but this time, instead of using the colouring material directly, we're going to set up a resist. And to do this, I've got a wax candle, and also I'm going to try out a wax crayon, so let's have a look and see how they work. Just as with the colouring materials, you do get a better impression if you rub the sides rather than the tip over the textured surface. And again, don't forget to use both textured surfaces of that embossing folder. But we will only really see the results when I start adding some colour. So I will use watercolour and I've grabbed one of my mermaid markers, but it can be any liquid colour really. And so that you can see how this works with other watercolours too, I have some pan format watercolour paint to try out as well. And I have a whole video on using resists with mermaid markers and you can find that video here and in the description as well. And whilst you're at it, here's some more suggested videos to watch that are just packed with ideas. My next normal art video is on Sunday, but don't forget to pop onto my channel this Friday for an extra special programme. And I'm looking forward to catching up with you again then.